Hey guys, how you doing? It's Ryan Doc here, coming to you from the Bear Cave. And today we're going to discuss communication. Not just communication to where you pick up the radio and you call out for some help. Communication of like how you're going to receive information as well. So I'm going to start on the bookends here. Well, we have two radios. Uh, these radios here are solar powered, crank powered, and battery operated uh, radios. I think that's the best way to go. It has a whole bunch of backup. These are both made by the same company. Um, it says uh, uh, K A I T E. Kate, um, I guess it's Kately. Kately radios. Um, this one here is a $40 range. This one here is $25. Both radios have very similar features and they also have cranks so you can uh, charge up your USB devices such as cell phones uh, and other kind of other communications. Now, say that being said, let's start down the basis. So what do we have for communication ways right now? Obviously we have our landline phones, our cell phones, and we have the internet with email. And we can also, those are both sending and receiving devices. <clears throat> During a disaster, earthquake here in California, cell phone coverage, as far as voice goes, is going to be limited. Same thing with landline. A lot of times you'll, you'll lose that completely. We had a 5.8 earthquake here a couple years ago in the area where I work. Uh, we were down without landline or cell phone use for about an hour, a little bit more than that. So... Um, but email worked slow, but it still worked, and so did text messages slow, but it still worked. Information got out. So that's where that uh, comes into play. However, if you want to receive information before or during the event, some of the same things that professional rescuers rely upon are information coming from NOAA. This radio here is a NOAA radio, which means that this is set up to send information to you via uh, a blast and um, and so if you have it set to that, it will turn on automatically when there's an alert. This radio here will receive weather information as well, but you have to physically uh, go to that station. If you, this one you, you have to set up. This one you, go, you have to physically go to that station. Now, NOAA information is really important, right? The weather information from the National Weather Service is really important, especially if you live in areas with unstable weather climates, such as Joplin, or such as Joplin. Well, in, in Missouri, where Joplin, uh, where the biggest tornado occurred over in that area. <clears throat> so... Uh, that being said, this kind of information is key. Getting that information early on can be the difference between making it through a disaster or being killed in a disaster. So moving on to, into the inside here, what I have is a scanner. This is a Radio Shack scanner. Any scanner will work if you want to have one. I am not a scanner head. There are people out there that love scanners, which is cool. They have all different kinds and they know how to program this stuff. Uh, a friend of mine programmed this for me uh, to where I can get ham radio operations on here, police that have non-encrypted police information on here, fire information on here, um, as well as the weather radio on here again. So this is a really, scanners are really kind of cool for that. It's pretty easy. There's a book that you can get where you can program it into it and, and save the information. He just happened to have the book, so that's why he programmed that for me. Moving on. Now these three devices here are all receivers, right? Which means that you can only uh, receive into them where this is a transceiver, this is a ham radio. The ham radio here, again, you need to have your FCC license. I've done a couple of videos on ham if you want to check those out. But along with this radio here, this one here is an inexpensive radio. This one's going to cost you about $125 to $150, depending on what you want in here. And it's a Waxon radio. It's Chinese made. You know, um, I, I got this, uh, uh, you know, just to test it out, to play with it. It works well for what it is. Um, inexpensive radio if you want something to throw into your bag that will work that you don't have to worry about spending a lot of money now um, I have over here this is a, the box that the radio came in this is what I have in my truck and this is a, a Yesu American made made in California um, FT8800 um, it's a very good radio very robust radio has a lot of capabilities this is the one I have um, in, in my truck this FT8800 by Yesu. Um, I also have two other handheld Yesus that I use as well. Um, so that's on the ham side of things. Now, now you remove these radios here, and you have also have the, the op opportunity to use CB radio. Um, this right here is the uh, uh, CB radio from uh, Uniden. I got this on, on eBay for about $30. Uh, again, this is a good radio to have uh, if you want to go out there. CB and ham are similar in the fact that it's a transceiver. Similar, the, ham, you need to have a license. CB, you don't need to have a license. 
CB is kind of crowded when it comes to, uh, to, to some of the stuff that's on there. Um, ham, uh, it's a little more technical. You know, those are the differences on there. I, that's why I have I have one of each. And uh, this unit in the radio as well is in my truck. Um, and uh, I use that for when I go out to the desert, talk to the guys in the CB back and forth where we're going, make sure that we don't get lost. And on the side of communication, that's what we do. So, ham radio, uh, CB radio, and your typical uh, solar battery crank operated high battery radio. Now, when it goes to these radios, um, as far as this type of radio goes here, you can buy cheap, cheap ones. As long as they're like a couple of dollars, five bucks, or whatever. Um, you know, they might work for a little while. I would say, let's go, I would say go a little bit more expensive. $40 for this radio, you can use it for when you go camping or whatever. Uh, you know, the other day we had a power outage, it was really nice to have something to do when we put this on. Um, it was a planned power outage in my neighborhood where they were doing some work. I happened to be uh, home when they did it. Uh, my wife and I listened to the radio just to, to spend some time and, you know, listen to the radio and just have something going on in the house. So that type of thing. Um, that's why I think these radios are good to have. Um, this radio here goes into my pack. This radio here goes into my pack. Uh, these these right here are small, compact, nice to do. And I, you don't have to worry about, you know, losing a lot of money. Uh, this right here is in my home kit. Uh, this right here is in my home kit. And obviously these are in my vehicles. So communication is really important because if you listen to anything that happens during any sort of disaster, what is the biggest complaint that um, all the responders have is communication. Communication is key to uh, surviving. Communication is key to recovery. So this is Rhino Doc, signing out.